So I found that choosing a new gaming monitor in today's market is kind of tough. There's so many options out there, especially new OLED options, that use very similar panels but have different features. So the question is, how do you choose the right one? For me, it's this 32-inch WOLED panel from LG that can either be a 4K native resolution or, with the press of a button, switch into 1080p at 480Hz, which I think is probably the fastest on the market right now. So this can be a beast of productivity as well as competitive games. And that's really what drew me to it. This is the LG 32GS95UE, and this is my experience with it over the last couple of months. And I'm coming from an Alienware QD OLED monitor, the AW2725D, as well as my Alienware IPS, which I've been using for the last few years. I'll make sure to mention over the course of this review why the Alienware QD OLED didn't end up working for me. Now, let's take a quick look at the unboxing. It's a really simple and straightforward experience. You get your brand new box, and inside is the stand base, the stand arm, a cover for the ports area on the back of the monitor, and the box that contains all the cables you need, including a certified HDMI and DisplayPort cable. Next, you're going to put your stand together, which is really simple. It's just the two thumb screws at the bottom, and then you snap the stand into the monitor, and you're good to go. Now for me, the design of this monitor is perfect. There are no logos or huge bezels. There is no fluff freely. It's just a beautiful display with thin bezels that makes it look so premium. And it also has my favorite stand design so far. This thin flat stand doesn't take up much space and you can also store things on top of it. The cable management slot is large and easy to pass your cables through and it looks really neat. And you also get an excellent range of adjustments that works really smoothly and doesn't require any effort. I did put mine on a BenQ Ergo arm, which is an awesome new arm that I really recommend if you're looking for one. But if I wasn't using a monitor arm, I would be super happy with the arm right out of the box. And matching the aesthetic of the front, the back is also nice and simple. It has a black purple hue that looks premium, and you also get a couple of LED zones which you can customize from within the OSD. And finally, you have your ports. One thing I like is that you have tons of space to plug in your cables, unlike some monitors that make it so hard with those tight cutouts on the back. The sides of the monitor have an aluminum build that is nice to the touch when you're adjusting it. And for ventilation, it's using a fan with vents on the top here. Now I found the fan to be completely silent under all circumstances, even after hours of usage. Now this display has a matte anti-glare coating, which may be unpopular among some OLED users, but for me, it's perfect. If you're like me and use this monitor for productivity, I found that a glossy coating suffers from a lot of reflections, which can cause eye strain with a lot of usage. But with the matte coating here, this is eliminated, and this is one of the few reasons why I switched from QD OLED to W OLED. So for design here, it's top notch, and I love the way it looks with my Ergon Office Walnut desk, as well as the rest of my setup. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by anyone, so everything you see in my setup and on the channel is stuff that I buy myself to help you make decisions on these products. So if you like the content, like the video and subscribe to the channel, and you can check out my affiliate links in the description if you want to pick up any of the stuff you see on the channel. Now, let's talk about specs and features, starting with the dual mode. This is the main new feature that this monitor brings to the table, and it's like magic. It makes this monitor accessible to a larger crowd, and it's especially useful for my use case. I wanted a 4K monitor for productivity, video editing, and immersive single player games, but I can absolutely switch into the dual mode and at 1080p and 480Hz, play the most competitive games. So this is really the best of both worlds. The 240Hz native 4K mode is stunning and it's really smooth. I use this mode most of the time and it's amazing for my job during the day or for my video editing or when I play games like Cyberpunk or Hogwarts Legacy for example. The 32 inch size is a perfect middle ground between productivity and gaming. And the extra height is so nice for multitasking, documents or Premiere Pro yet it's still manageable even in the most competitive games. And because LG improved the pixel structure in this third gen panel, combined with the 4K resolution and the matte screen, the text clarity is superb. I personally cannot distinguish the text quality from my IPS, and it feels really comfortable to look at and read from. This point was essential for me, since I work on this most of the day, and I need the text to be perfect. This is another area where WOLED is superior for my use case. The 1080p mode is excellent as well, and it works really well with no hiccups or extra software needed. All you need to do is press the button on the bottom of the screen here, and it takes about 3-5 to five seconds to switch over. 1080p for a 32 inch size doesn't look the best in graphically intensive games, 
but the 480 hertz refresh rate is really something else. Movement in Valorant or Overwatch at 480 hertz is an experience you would need to see for yourself, and I cannot relay it here for you on the camera. It's incredibly smooth, but I would only recommend this mode for games like Counter-Strike, Valorant, and Overwatch, since you do lose out on picture quality in graphically intensive games. And what I mean by that is things can look a little blurry. You also have the option to play at different sizes if you want something more competitive or you want an image to be sharper at the lower resolution. You can choose from a 27 inch or a 24 inch option with the 1080p resolution, but I personally never use these as I feel like the full size is perfect. Being a W OLED, it's just unbeatable at contrast and black levels. Even in my brightly lit room with lights around for video filming, the black levels here are just perfect. Unlike QD OLED, which turns purple, even with the smallest amount of light. The colors out of the box look amazing. You get true 10-bit support, as well as a super wide color gamut, so you have perfect accuracy for creative work. And this vibrancy also translates over to content and games. Everything looks excellent on here. I would find it very hard to go back to IPS after using this for a couple of months. Here's a look at the comparison between my previous IPS and this monitor, in a few different scenarios. You can see that on the IPS, the blacks are very washed out because of the backlight coming through, but on the OLED, it looks absolutely perfect for all these images. Also being a W OLED, the response times on this monitor are almost perfect at 0.03 milliseconds. It's instant, and in terms of motion blur, yeah, there is none. You can see that here in this comparison between my IPS and this monitor. It's G-Sync and FreeSync compatible, and it shows up in the NVIDIA control panel as such as well. In my experience, it was really easy to enable, but one thing about VRR and OLEDs to keep in mind is that if you have inconsistent frames, you will see a bit of VRR flicker. It's really noticeable in darker scenes like this one here in Cyberpunk, for example. Now I'm quite sensitive to this type of flicker, and I find that it can affect me, although it doesn't affect everyone. If you are like me and don't want to see this type of flickering, Make sure you limit your FPS in games where you can't get consistent frames or just turn off VRR for those games altogether. Here in Cyberpunk, I limit it to 60 FPS in 4K and the flickering stopped. But this doesn't happen in games that are easier to run for my older GPU like Valorant or League of Legends where I get really consistent frames. Now OLEDs are not incredibly bright and this is one of the few drawbacks of the technology in general. But this panel can achieve around 275 nits in standard mode which for my setup is more than enough for any type of task. I kept my IPS around 200 nits in my office, and I'm doing the same with this monitor. So I'm setting it at around 75% brightness, which is around 200 nits, and I'm very happy with it for both work and gaming. The panel is HDR True Black 400 certified, with a peak brightness of around 1300 nits, and in my testing, I thought it was outstanding. The details and colors look super nice, and with it being an OLED, there are no issues with blooming since each individual pixel is able to turn off completely, creating perfect images in all situations. Viewing angles on this monitor are also excellent. No matter what angle you look at it, it looks perfect with no shifts or inconsistencies. In terms of quality control on the panel I have here, I ran solid screen tests to check everything out, and it looks perfect in all of them. There are no dead pixels, and uniformity is perfect in all colors. I also see no signs of burn-in, but it's only been two months and I don't expect any signs of that for a while anyway, but I will keep you updated if that happens at any point. Now this model I have here doesn't come with a KVM or a USB-C power delivery, which is a little bit disappointing, especially that this was LG's flagship monitor last year. The refreshed version for this year is called the LG 32GX870A and it just got released. It has the same panel as this one, but it does get you a KVM and a USB-C with 90 watts of power delivery if you absolutely need it. For me, I use a Dell dock with my work laptop since it needs 130 watts of power, so I don't need this feature. Now if you also don't need it, I would strongly recommend going with this version I have here as it's regularly seeing discounts at the moment as they phase it out, so I was able to get it for over 25% off which is an excellent price for this caliber of display. Another advantage for this model is the speakers. You have two 10 watt speakers with what LG calls pixel sound, which basically directs the audio depending on the image, which is really nice. And while I usually would never use monitor speakers, these are excellent. I use them all the time when I don't have headphones on. 
The newer model will also have speakers, but they're downgraded to two 7 watt speakers and they do not feature pixel sound. So the choice between this and the newer model will really boil down to what you're looking for in the monitor and pricing. All right, now let's go through the OSD and the settings that I'm using. You can get into this menu by using the knob in the back, which doubles as a button. The first menu here has some shortcuts, such as your input sources and your presets. Once you get into the next menu, you have your game adjust, which has all the saved presets. I'm using the Gamer 1 preset, which I think looks best because it has a warm color tone and it makes images look more natural. You also have your toggle for dual modes 27 and 24 inch sizes. And you have your VRR toggle, as well as a couple of gaming features like the crosshair and the FPS counter on display. Next is the picture adjust menu, which will have your brightness, contrast, sharpness, and some other image related options. The only thing I changed here is the brightness. I've set this to 75%, while everything else is set to default. Next, you have your sound menu, which is just the options that are related to the speakers, as well as your inputs menu, which has all your input sources. This monitor does have auto input source switching, so you don't have to worry about having two PCs connected to it. Next, in the general section, you have your OLED care options and screen information. In terms of the OLED care options, there are three here to mention. First is the OLED screen move, which is your pixel shift feature. This will shift the pixels slightly across the display to prevent image retention as well as burn in from static content, which is why you may notice a little black bar on the edges of the display from time to time. There are four modes here without any description, but after digging around for what these modes mean, I found out that modes one and two are more aggressive when it comes to shifting, so you may notice them at work while looking at the display. While mode three moves the pixels in smaller, less noticeable shifts. I experimented with modes 1 through 3, and I liked mode 3 the most, so that's what I kept on. The second option is OLED screensaver. I have that enabled, and it will dim the display if no movement happens on it for some time. Then you have your OLED image cleaning, which will queue to run every 4 hours of accumulated usage. You don't have to do anything for this to run, just use the monitor like you normally would, and the next time it goes into standby mode, it will automatically perform this. I also have automatic standby set to 4 hours, so in case I forget this monitor running overnight, then it would turn off automatically after 4 hours. So that's pretty much all of the settings I use on my monitor. Other than that, I use a darker background like this one, and I use the auto hide taskbar feature. So all in all, I rarely use the word endgame to describe a monitor. The last one that fit the bill was my Alienware IPS. But this monitor here definitely fits that bill because it does everything I want with very little compromise. So if you're like me and you need a 32 inch OLED that can do productivity work as well as competitive gaming, I would highly recommend you pick this one up.